Good evening. The Finishing Touch Awards are presented to highlight the successes and achievements of the St. Louis painting, decorating, and drywall industries. Our program is brought to you by the Painting and Decorating Foundation and the Wall and Ceiling Industry Advancement Fund. Each category of the Finishing Touch Awards represents the level of skill, determination, and execution accomplished by these contractors and their talented crews on these particular projects. Each of these awards represents the teamwork and dedication required to produce the highest quality performance from the office to the supply community to the job site. Building construction is the skillful blending of business acumen, science, technology, and artistic expression to carry out the vision of the designer and ultimately that of the owner. Contest entries are scrutinized, criticized, and ultimately finalized by a panel of judges with more than a century of experience in our industry. They are Tom Finan, Executive Director of the St. Louis Construction Industry Forum, John Buckles, Training Director for Painters District Council 58, Craig Hood, Director of Training for the Mid-America Carpenters Regional Council, and architect Galen Vassar of the Lawrence Group. The judges looked at the level of difficulty, the creativity employed to overcome obstacles, and ultimately, the level of craft precision used to achieve the desired result. We now proudly present the winners of the 2021 Finishing Touch Awards. Our first award this evening goes to TJ Weiss for its outstanding work in the drywall framing and hanging category at Marriott's AC Hotel in Chesterfield. Marriott markets its AC Hotel brand as reflecting the souls of the cities in which they reside, but we think the Chesterfield location reflects the heart of TJ Weiss. The five-story building is a hybrid of sorts. The upper four floors are framed in wood that rests on a podium of structural steel framing on the first floor. The accumulation of stored materials used by other crafts hampered early progress on the project, but t -Day's carpenters employed a total station layout unit that enabled them to overcome the overcrowding and save countless man hours in the process. The 23,000 square foot first floor features offices, event spaces, a library, bar, lounge, kitchen, and dining area, each demanding flawless framing and hanging execution. The judges were extremely impressed with the degree of craftsmanship and attention to detail in this challenging project. Excellent work by T.J. Weiss. T.J. Weiss also picks up an honorable mention in drywall framing for its work on the expansion of Boeing's Harpoon Missile Facility in St. Charles. A wet spring threw the project's schedule completely off track and the general contractor relied on T.J. Weiss to save the day and restore it. Using 12 separate crews, T.J. installed 35-foot-tall framing members weighing 200 pounds each to carry the four layers of exterior sheathing and interior drywall. Within two months, T.J.'s carpenters framed and installed more than 2,000 sheets of glass mat sheathing and 2,000 sheets of 5 8 inch drywall. Way to go, T.J. Weiss. Next up is the drywall finishing category, where T.J. Weiss nabs first place for its splendid finishing efforts at the Bank of America offices inside the Centene building in Clayton. The design incorporates open ceiling spaces in the common areas that required all drywall to receive a level four finish to the deck above. Common office spaces receive suspended and framed drywall clouds for illumination and acoustical purposes. Long continuous spans of wall received a level five drywall finish prior to the decoration with high gloss paint or vinyl wall coverings. The exterior of the Centene building is glass panels, which means the interior spaces are bathed in intense, unforgiving light. The judges noted the meticulous attention to detail in the joint compound base coats, critical for smooth, unmodeled finishes. Featured effects include curvilinear accent walls, recessed curved light troughers, and long straight bulkheads at individual office fronts. All in all, this is top-notch work from T.J. Weeks, a contractor who's built its reputation on exceeding the demands of its customers and the industry it represents. Outstanding accomplishment. Let's turn our attention to floor finishing now where Bazan Painting sweeps up first place for its installation of a maintenance-free polished floor for Schnooks in Arnold. Tasked with completing a 13-step stripping, grinding, and polishing process, Bazan's crew had to complete its work after hours while the store remained open during normal business hours. 
Painters used a special dust-free grinding machine to make several passes across the floor down each aisle prior to the application of a densifying agent and final polishing. The aisles were individually worked and finished. Then the fully stocked shelves were removed so work could proceed underneath. As each aisle was completed, the shelves were returned to position and the process began again. Judge John Buckholz was particularly impressed with Bazan's ability to work each aisle while seamlessly burnishing and blending the areas beneath the shelves. As the job progressed, each night's work had to be cleaned and prepared for business the next day. Very impressive work by Bazan Painting at the Schnucks Market in Arnold. Our next category is Exterior Commercial Painting, where Thomas Industrial Coatings lays claim to first place for its inspirational execution at Concordia Seminary's 156-foot-tall Luther Bell Tower. While the tower encloses the bells, it's not an environmentally controlled space. It's actually open to the elements. Thomas was charged with the coatings renovation of the Luther Tower structural steel that supports a 49-bell carillon. The structure is a series of interconnected I-beams and C-channels that carry the bells, which weigh between 17 pounds to 2.5 tons each. Thomas's painters had to prep and paint all the steel, plus the spiral staircase that's used to access the bells. There was no way to use the staircase to reach all the steel that needed to be treated, so a crane was employed to lift and help place the scaffold inside the tower. With the scaffold in place, all steel was then solvent wiped per SSPC standards and machine tooled prior to the application of the aluminum mastic paint. This is impressive work indeed and a ringing success for Thomas Industrial Coatings. Second place in exterior painting is garnered by Leach Painting for its complete repainting project at the old Tobman Prestige Outlet Mall in Chesterfield. The new owner rebranded the mall as The District, an entertainment complex designed to complement its neighbor, Top Golf. The district features a mix of retail, restaurants, entertainment venues, and other family-friendly attractions. A new brand calls for a new color scheme, so Leach was charged with applying a new coat of paint to nearly everything at the site. Painters found themselves coating a plethora of surfaces, including, but not limited to, masonry, eaves, concrete tilt-up, steel, signage, light poles, and even trash receptacles. No surface was too large nor small for Leach Painting's finishing touch at the district. Nice work. Bazan Painting picks up an honorable mention in exterior painting for the patchwork it performed on the Bell Fountain Neighbors Community Swimming Pool. Bazan was hired to handle the extensive patchwork of the existing finish, which had begun to delaminate from the pool shell. Bazan's painters painstakingly removed the damaged materials, prepped the areas to be patched, and skillfully blended the new finish with the existing finish to produce the exact results the city of Bell Fountain Neighbors was hoping for. Nice job, Bazan Painting. Now let's turn our attention to interior commercial painting, where we discover that Leach Painting has picked up first place for its wonderful finish work at the Edison Avenue Lofts in Granite City. Leach was chosen to provide the finishing touches on the transformation of a 96-year-old YMCA into a modern apartment building. The old Y is on the National Register of Historic Places, and its conversion to apartments required the preservation of its significant historical architectural elements. Fully aware of the building's significance, Leach repainted all walls, ceilings, doors, frames, and trim work, a task that was carried out with skill and precision. Of particular note, Leach was asked to renew the deteriorating window sills throughout the lofts. They did so by sanding, scraping, filling, and finishing to restore them to their old beauty. Additionally, all wood doors, frames, window sash, and moldings were sanded, stained, and varnished to return them to their original state. The Edison Avenue Lofts in Granite City, award-winning performance by Leach Painting. Our second place winner for interior commercial painting goes to Bazan Painting for its treatments at the Bomberito Automotive Group's corporate suite at Worldwide Technology Raceway in Madison, Illinois. Bazan was charged with applying the finishing touches to Bomberito's newly renovated suite at the racetrack. The biggest headache for Bazan was meeting Illinois' strict volatile organic chemicals requirements. But once the proper materials were chosen, Bazan went about patching, prepping, painting, and installing decals to meet the owner's wishes. Transformed from a rather run-of-the-mill bland space, Bomberito's luxury suite is now a thing they can truly take pride in. 
The right materials and the right contractor are a winning combination every time. Congrats to Bizon Painting. Third place in this category goes to All-American Painting for its extensive undertaking at SSM's St. Louis University Hospital on South Grand. Consuming almost 40,000 man hours, All-American's six crews set about painting walls, ceilings, door frames, and floors throughout the complex. Additionally, All-American installed thousands of feet of wall coverings, intumescent paint, and dry erase coatings at various locations throughout the project. At the peak of production, 35 painters called SLU Hospital home. When all was said and done, it took nearly two years for All-American to complete this project. Nice work indeed. First place in industrial building painting is claimed by Bazan Painting for its work on Building 20 at Anheuser-Busch InBev on the near south side. Building 20 was originally constructed in 1905 to serve as a stockhouse, but AB never got around to installing the stock tanks, so it eventually evolved into a storage facility, sort of like a giant closet. Recently, the brewery decided to turn it into a brewing process building, and work began to achieve that end. Part of the demolition required that six inches of cork insulation set with tar had to be removed and the walls pressure washed and power tool cleaned. The barrel vault ceilings looked like they hadn't been cleaned in over a hundred years. But once cleaned and prepped, the walls and ceilings were then finished with a two coat epoxy system that made the space sparkle. All steel was spot primed as needed before painting. The project proceeded under a withering schedule with other trades nipping at their heels, but Bazan's crew prevailed. It took them over 5,000 man hours to apply roughly 2,500 gallons of materials to achieve the desired effect. Building 20 is now operating as originally intended, part of AB's beer brewing process, more than 115 years after it was built. Nicely done, Bazan Painting. Our next category is Painting Industrial Structures, where Thomas Industrial Coatings grabs first place for its work on Lock and Dam 25 in Winfield, Missouri. Thomas's crew was tasked with grit blasting, deletting, and recoating the dam's 17 gates and steel service decking that spans the 1,300 foot long dam across the Mississippi River, north of St. Louis. The dam, originally built in 1939, was in dire need of attention after years of rust and decay had taken their toll on the span. While most areas were blasted and recoated, parts of the service deck were treated with a rust penetrating primer prior to recoating. All spent blast media was captured by reclaiming machines staged on spud barges on the south side of the dam. Stages and lifts were used to access the gates and temporary platforms were used in confined spaces where needed. Work on the dam took four years to complete, with Thomas's crew having to deal with mother nature at seemingly every turn. On several occasions, rising floodwaters forced crews to evacuate their equipment to the spud barges so they could be towed to safer moorings. Oh, while Thomas's work on the dam proceeded, the Winfield lot continued to operate on its normal schedule. Judge Galen Vassar was amazed by the size and scope of this project. She had never seen anything quite like this undertaking. But when you're Thomas Industrial Coatings, this is what you do. Impressive work indeed. Second place in industrial structures painting is awarded to Coatings Unlimited for corrosion protection and beautification of the Boomerang Roller Coaster at Six Flags in St. Louis. Coatings Unlimited was charged with inspecting, prepping, and overcoating this 935 foot long three loop steel coaster. With its 117 foot height and its three inversions, painting this roller coaster was no ride in an amusement park. Corroded areas received a spot coating of epoxy while the entire structure was top coated with polysiloxane. Six Flags can be proud that the work produced meets or exceeds not only manufacturer specifications, but exceeds the current state of the art in the coatings industry. Well done, Coatings Unlimited. Third place in industrial structures goes to Thomas Industrial Coatings for its renovation work on the eastbound lanes of the Blanchette Bridge over the Missouri River at St. Charles. Thomas Industrial was hired to perform grit blasting and repainting of the cantilever style bridge that connects St. Louis County and St. Charles County. Work included the installation of 320,000 square feet of suspended work platform that spanned the entire length of the underside of the bridge. In all, almost a million square feet of steel was contained, prepped, and coated. Impressive Thomas Industrial Coating. 
We have two honorable mentions in this category, both given to Thomas Industrial Coatings for two water towers, one in Wood River, Illinois, the other in Peebley, Missouri. The Wood River Tower is part of the city's water supply and stands almost 200 feet tall. Work on the tower was accessed using a 185-foot man lift. The water tower in Peebley stands at the newly renovated Oak Valley Golf Course and Resort, formerly the recreation resort owned by Teamsters Local 688. While it's not as tall as the one in Wood River, the one in Peebley looks like a 120-foot tall teed up golf ball. The judges felt that each of the towers deserved mention because of their level of difficulty and because well, they're just kind of cool. First place in commercial wall covering goes to All-American Painting for its very nice performance at CBRE Accenture's offices in Maryville Center. Originally designed for installation of three separate wall coverings, the job was expanded by another 12 wall coverings at the start of the job. The already compressed time schedule made no accommodation for the added work, and All-American's painters found themselves under the gun. Not only did they have to rely on their bid measurements, they also had to precisely field measure and verify three custom one-of-a-kind designs for the project. There was absolutely no margin for error in these measurements. Rising to the occasion, All-American Painting brought all their skills and knowledge to the job. Wall coverings installed included wood veneer panels, custom ombre gradient panels, and a mural of a map of St. Louis. CBRE Accenture was thrilled with the wall coverings installed by All-American Painting and we're thrilled to award them first place in this category. Our last award this evening is for special effects and faux finishes, where Paintsmiths of St. Louis snags first place for its accelerated aging finishes at the City Foundry. The design of City Foundry incorporates much of the grittiness and industrial feel of the original plant when it functioned as a real foundry. Paintsmiths of St. Louis was charged with aging the brand new shiny exterior ductwork to make it look worn and rusty, like existing original ductwork nearby. Judge John Buckholz was particularly impressed by Paintsmiths' ability to create the desired patina on the new sheet metal to make it virtually indistinguishable from the old work. It's one thing to make something new look old and worn, but when the model for your work is so close by, it's a daunting challenge one that Paintsmiths of St. Louis accepted and conquered at the City Foundry. Bravo. Well, that's our show. Thank you to all the women and men of our contractor members, the journey level workers and apprentices of Painters District Council 58, the Mid-America Carpenters District Council, and our supply community. Together, you continue to enrich and expand the traditions and values established over generations by those who came before. Your work stands as a testament to your commitment to embrace those standards of excellence. And we thank you.